My dear Bagginses and Buffins. Welcome back. We are continuing our revisit of the first season of The Rings of Power. Uh, this is episode three, entitled Adar. Uh, so yeah, let's just get right to it. We've got an opening which takes place in a very creepy orc slave pit. Uh, I, I think these scenes are always well done. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. The, the voices are good. Yeah. yeah. I um I don't think anyone has a problem with this, and uh, this isn't spoilers. This is just kind of sad news. The actor playing Adar won't be back, so <clears throat> it is sad because uh like his scenes are always pretty good. All right, so we move on uh, to like this... maybe 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 they'll write a note real quick, like Halbrand just stabs him. And the orcs need a new leader, so... Uh, honestly, <laughs> honestly, I... Because we know he's gone, I think I prefer that than just to have yeah. him vanish. Uh, the other option is he is some, somehow transformed or something. Um, like, yeah. maybe maybe he's wearing armor and then he's killed that way. Like, maybe you can keep the, the character around with a different actor wearing a helmet for a little bit. Um... But I, I think just a confrontation between the two, a really quick one, is a way to really establish Sauron as a, a true power. Because, as we'll see in this next scene, <clears throat> Sauron and Galadriel, these scenes, in hindsight, they're very strange still. I'm watching this knowing full well what's about to happen. I still don't know what's going on in these scenes. Like, I'm still confused by these these characters. They... I, yeah. Why is Galadriel being weird like this? Why is Halbrand being weird? Like, <laughs> like everything well, is yeah. so weird. Yeah. So yeah, the, I said Rendir unites with the elves. This still looks pretty good. Yep. Yeah. So now we have Galadriel awakening on a boat. Yeah. Yeah. So the ship looks good. We don't really have any movie stuff to compare. No, to. I I will say though that like. There's a lot of uh, j just the way that that they've written this part. Galadriel comes awake and is like disheveled and kind of crazy. I, I it just feels like it's a like they don't quite like the character herself. She's usually in more control than that. I know it's a weird situation, but like we'll see later on in this episode and next episode. That even when things don't go her way or something happens, she's still somewhat in control. Here, she just comes out and just is like kind of frantic. It's kind of weird and just off from the character. And in Halbrand, we know who he is now, but <clears throat> in this scene, he's just very weird and like cryptic. And why? What is? Why is he being weird and cryptic when I think he would want to befriend her? So he's almost like if I push her away it will make her trust me more later. Like it just, it's just so weird to me. So I, I kind of have a weird problem with some of these early Halbrand Galadriel scenes. And this is like one of the big ones that jump out to me. At least that's, that's my take on it. Later on, I think that their relationship makes more sense on how they interact. But here I'm still super confused what the plan was from Halbrand slash Sauron. Yeah. Um, but uh, Elendil, so, uh, Elendil's good, and he, he's able to deliver Tolkien lines. Uh, well, I was gonna say, so I, I've seen some people uh, criticize the look of the armor. Okay, yeah, the armor. Do you, think, do you think it's cheesy? Yes, I think it's super cheesy. I don't like the armor. I I do like the clothing they wear once they get into the city when they're not wearing the armor. Um, now you could argue that as a as a city on an island that involves a lot of their navy their armor has to be lightweight almost leather and they're just trying to mimic the look of gold in yeah, a weird pseudo you fall, you fall in wearing full armor you're, you're dead that's right so that so this is what i was talking about in um, <clears throat> a previous uh, video of ours where you can you can patch these things in yourself with very little creative addition where you just say hey this armor can't be metal 
because it doesn't make sense for Numenor to have metal armor on ships. Um, and then you can kind of wave it away like that. Especially in, like, peacetime. <clears throat> like, what's the point? Oh, especially in peacetime. Like, this is almost just... Yeah. It, it's a uniform to mimic... You could argue it's a uniform to mimic armor that they would have worn in by, uh, bygone era in the same way that we wear uh, clothing that was from military units from World War II. Like, we wear trench coats and stuff that were born out of World War One and Two. So you could argue something like that <clears throat> with this armor. I still don't like it um, f for the fact that it it does look kind of cheap. Like it, even if you were arguing that, I would still say that they would make the the society of Numenor would make the armor look really nice. So I still don't quite like the armor. I do like the clothing when we get into the city, though. So well, uh, I was gonna say before we get into the city, so they 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 the boat goes down <clears throat> that um, I guess canyon, and there's those geoglyphs on the, the cliffs, on yep. the cliff face. I, I was going to comment that I don't think they quite live up to the movies. No. The, these ones <clears throat> these ones are, are not... These are CGI. The movie ones were a little bit too, but there were still miniatures of the movie ones. Here, I don't think they did miniatures. They they decided not to waste time. Now, it's a show. It can't, it can't be doing as much to every scene. It would have been a nice nod to have... A miniature uh, and make it look more real but uh, I will give it a pass uh, <clears throat> you know I, I know that they have to pick and choose where they spend their money and uh, I'd rather have them do it on battle scenes when they have them and on uh, other scenes that have have more presence than just one shot of the ship coming through but I, I agree with you I think they could have been done better if that was a film or, or if they if they had someone who was truly passionate about having the look stand up to the films, they would have known to do a miniature model of this uh, and just give it that look of authenticity. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, I use a derogatory word here, but Galadriel is a huge uh, B word. <laughs> very, <laughs> very, very arrogant, very arrogant. And I, I think it's actually kind of it's actually there's some comic relief like it's actually funny watching how rand try to de-escalate <laughs> he's like what she means <laughs> <laughs> what she's trying to say <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh i like, like i said i have issues with some of these early uh banter moments between the two uh yeah i for me, I still don't understand what Sauron slash Halbrand, what the plan is. Think, I don't even think he cares about conquering Middle Earth at this point. He just wants right, to like, so go be a blacksmith. I'm glad you said it. I have that written down in my notes, and I was like, I can't say this. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, but that's what it seems like. He's staring longingly at a forge. <laughs> is this what he wants to do? It's just for the audience. So. So when you do that in a film or a show, that is the internal dialogue in a novel. You would normally get internal dialogue from that character. That is the moment for the film to show us what this character wants. He wants to be a blacksmith. That's it. He doesn't want anything else. And and for for this to be Sauron, like this is why I jokingly said when we first did this episode, that's not Sauron anymore. This guy just wants to be a blacksmith. He's just a con man. <laughs> <laughs> and and like I just don't get heck he didn't even know where he was that it cuts to him being confused where they are now if if I were writing this show and I wanted to be a kind of a reveal I would have had him know where he is almost in a way that he shouldn't like he knew where he was going beforehand and that would make it seem like he's got a master plan here he kind of just is like where are we oh Numenor I could be a blacksmith here. Like it, it's just so random and like happenstance for him. Uh, so, like I said, I just don't like the early dialogue and the early interaction between Halbrand, Galadriel, and even just like how they interact with Numenor itself. I just don't quite like, and I, I still don't on second watch. I there are some stuff coming up though that I I do enjoy. More. What do you think of his like 
what he's wearing is like very stereotypical like castaway rags is that is that even real oh, <laughs> i know like <laughs> so in hind like now that we know who he is we can maybe say this is him shape-shifted into this scummy piratey looking guy yeah. um but again what is the plan why was he on that raft why does he save galadriel why does he not know where he is when he gets to on a Numenorian ship? Yeah, they need to create a whole spinoff now, just like Halbrand. The early, uh, the, the early <laughs> adventures of young Halbrand. <laughs> uh, I also commented that you can see Farazhan controlling the audience pretty early. Yes, and he he always has these like you can you might. People will say they're stupid. I don't know. You can argue whether you like it or not. But he's got these stupid metaphors. He's like, I would sooner kneecap a stallion than do this or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, it, I don't know. <laughs> but I will say, though, I will and say. And the crowd, the whole crowd laughs at him, too, when he says it. So yeah. <laughs> so I, what I will say, though, about that, and I, I agree with you, some of the dialogue it, you can kind of take or leave, but um, the actor that plays Elendil and the actor that plays Farazhan they both deliver those lines with conviction more so than some of the other actors when they're tasked with doing these very heavy handed, um, like medieval styled sounding phrases. I feel like when Farazhan and Elendil say it, it, it comes across a bit more genuine and it, I, I'm okay. Like we're going to get to one in, in episode four that I think we both yeah. don't like. And I yeah, still, even, I think he delivers yeah. it well. Yeah, he has another one here. It's like an avalanche can be started with one stone. That's another one he says. Yeah. He, he's just full of these. <laughs> yeah, his character's full of these. The, the, the <laughs> writers are giving him nothing. And yet I think he's one of the <laughs> he's one of the better actors. Like, he's selling this hard. Him and Elendil are, I think, doing a fantastic job. Um, like, I still have my issues. and It's not necessarily the actor's faults because we don't know what, like, the director and all that kind of stuff behind the scenes. But... The way Halbrand and, and Galadriel, the way they deliver some of their dialogue, it it comes across kind of off for me. Whereas these two, they feel in place in this world. Whereas, yeah, I, I even the heck, even the queen, there's some aspects about how she talks that it, it, it feels fake. Like it feels like it's for a movie instead of in-world dialogue. I don't know. It, that's just how I interpret it. Um, uh, so I have a note saying I've been searching for my piece longer than you know. So that's a Halbrand quote. Yeah, I guess that's some foreshadowing or backshadowing. But I don't know. Yeah. So if, if we wanna if we wanna argue like weird weird quotes, I got one here. I think this is in the scene, or it might be like they might cut away and come back. But it's um, uh, where is it? It's a Lendial. and he says that it's unwise to live one's life guessing after signs and portents. But then he argues the sea is always right, and the sea put Galadriel in my path, and therefore mm, so I must totally guess. I must <laughs> guess at that this is a sign, and live my life by it. <laughs> so, in in the exact same scene, he is arguing both sides of it, and I don't know if the writers caught that or not. Uh, uh yeah, I was gonna say, so, so the civilian costumes look good. What do yeah. you think of the line, the sea is always right? Yeah, so we've done this one before. I know. It feels way too much Game there's of gotta Thrones. Be a, there's got to be a better way to do it. Like, the sea is, my, I mean, I'm not good at so, either, but the sea is my ma our master. Or like, yeah. Or, or, like, the sea is always right. It's too much like the customer is always right. Right. So there's, a, yeah, so I've got a, a, a whole bunch of things here. So, yeah, sea is always right. Sounds like the customer is always right, which is just, it, that in itself is a misquote already so it's already get, going into bad territory <laughs> i didn't even know that <laughs> yeah so it's it's the customer is always right when it comes to uh what is it the customer is always right um with taste so it's if a customer so, doesn't so they just they like someone just cut that last bit off <laughs> right right so some 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 guy talking to some boardroom cut that last bit off but it's not that you just do whatever the customer says it's if they don't like a product because it doesn't it doesn't look a certain way then you'll alter the like the the creators they're, they're will right alter the product yeah. it's not about it's not about the store clerk having to suffer 
Karens, okay? It's not that. <laughs> but anyway, so not al already that quote is off, but then it sounds way too much like Game of Thrones. And and at the same time, I've just rewatched all of Seinfeld, and it sounds a lot like the scene where George Costanza is talking about uh, when a whale washes up on the beach and he has to go out. The sea was angry my, that, that day, my friends. <laughs> Like an old man trying to send back soup at a deli. <laughs> That's all I can think about now when I hear the sea is always right. So it's like you've you've got all these problems with that line. And I know what they were going for. Like so do you. Like we're trying to come up with better ones. Like but the sea is mighty would even be. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um or like heck, you could even steal something from Mulan. Like uh Don't underestimate the sea. As, something like as that. As swift as the sea, or like something silly like but anyway, it uh, obviously like that the essence is like the sea can like fuck you right well, so, <laughs> so 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 you have to like be you have to you have to like you have to know what you're doing that's basically what it's what it's that's, about that's right yeah so i've got to like I, I think you're right i think you like the sea the sea is is basically the giver of life for this society but also can take it away yes and so you have to respect it and you have to follow its commands if we take your metaphor yeah further. i mean it would be like a total bible ripoff but they could say like the sea giveth the sea taketh away <laughs> i actually like that way better so already that's better obviously you need to like workshop these lines i'm not gonna have it off the top of my head here but i don't like the sea is always right it the way the way it's chanted sounds silly like you need if you're gonna chant something it's got to have there's got to be some oomph to it and and the c is always right just doesn't have it for me um <clears throat> yeah that i guess that's that's the extent of of that i i i know what they're going for so like going forward i guess i won't like talk too much about this but yeah it's there's just something off that it's all these things that add up plus the lore stuff that people get upset about and eventually are turned off by uh and that's that's definitely one of them right there uh do we go back to the labor camp at this point i think that's where we go right yeah yeah i said i think the orcs reaction to the sun is is well done yep so well, yeah you, i i really like that they show more of that than yeah we never really saw it got to see that before yeah, yeah so like peter jackson like the it's mentioned i believe but like we just don't see it playing out that way um i like seeing it happen so that's that's neat to see uh then you have the sweep the sweep this lands like salt from a table yeah i know um <laughs> <laughs> like did you need that at all <laughs> let's, let's cross out the simile all together <laughs> <laughs> Sweep the lands is fine. <laughs> yeah, and that's a, that's the thing is like it, it does feel like they they as they're writing it they're like they're almost using like some sort of algorithm to be like how do we make it sound Tolkien how do we make it sound medieval and it's like use these metaphors but like that's not yeah you get some of that in the original trilogy but it's not all sorts of these weird metaphors there's like when the, and when they come up they're either more impactful or they're silly and yet powerful like the one the, the one um that seems silly is when they're in the mines of moria and gandalf realizes we're gonna go this way because it doesn't smell so bad like you know what i mean like that's something silly and dumb that you could easily pat like say that's stupid but because up until this point he's been this somewhat stoic and somewhat serious like once you get past the shire moments somewhat serious character for him to then turn and and he just had a powerful moment with frodo talking about uh frodo saying he wants uh to kill Gollum, yes. or and, and and he tells him don't be so quick to deal out death and judgment and then he goes this way it smells better like that works and people love that scene and so you can have these sillier sayings or sillier moments, but you need more, you need more, um, tr like truly impactful moments beforehand to like, to like get through these, these other ones. And, and that's what I have a problem with Farazon as well. Like you said, he throws a lot of them out there. He does have a good speech. I think it's in the next episode where prior to him saying one of these silly lines, it's a really good speech. 
so it ends up working for me but uh yeah i think you gotta you gotta set the stage before you just dive into salt from the table that kind of stuff uh okay they slices they slice the throat for not cutting the tree and i said i actually do feel sad so emotions are actually successfully evoked from me here yeah yeah no i i agree i think they need it like in hindsight this needed to happen because they were being treated a little bit too well from what we would expect from orcs so to have them almost be like randomly ruthless that's a bit more in keeping and it actually makes them a, a scary presence uh and and so i as much as i was also sad to see that character uh get killed like that it i do think we needed to see these these orcs actually abusing these elves to to truly make us realize that these orcs are not just silly nothing you know creatures that you can kill with with one one guy can't just cut through this entire army like these guys are these guys mean business uh okay i think I, for me i'm jumping back to i guess i just don't have a thing to say but i'm jumping back to um uh numenor yep. and the, the mega guy i call him the mega guy yeah uh says what are you called and Halbrain answers depends so like that's more sauron hinting there. yeah I, so so i actually kind of like that i in this scene there's a combination of things i like and things that i wish they did a little bit better um but yeah so i i do like him being a bit more cryptic around these people but at the same time we believe he wants to be a blacksmith why is he being antagonistic like you know what i mean like why not you know why not he's Sauron right he doesn't have to prove anything he's already established that so why not be a bit more nice and and like try to befriend them instead of antagonizing them stealing their stuff like it, it his plan I still don't understand Sauron's plan here like this is my problem is that until we're back on we're back in Middle Earth proper the planning from Sauron seems random and like things happen to him and he goes with it. And I just, that doesn't feel like Sauron to me. Yeah. Anyway, they corner him and they're, they're going to like beat him up. And he says, please don't do this. To me, that feels like a warning, not like yeah. a, a bag. It's like, oh, you're going to regret this. <laughs> well, so, and this is like the thing where it's like, so he stole their stuff. Yeah. His plan was go back to the blacksmith, whom have who's already just. Yeah, I have this now. Oh wow, you actually. Are oh wow, yeah, you you went to school in one day and got your <laughs> got your license, and and so he steals this thing. He gets confronted and he goes to them. Please don't do. Give it like wh what did you expect to happen when you stole their thing? And then the please don't do this line. That's the only moment where I'm like, oh, he doesn't want to like go to jail or something like oh now he's like oh my plan sucks like it just feels like he did not think this through and it's sauron we're talking about he must have thought it through so, so yeah, the anger the anger coming out is also sauron but he also because they keep calling him blow man and at that point he actually says it's halbrand yeah. so it made me think about like what are you called and the answers depends and finally says to them it's like it's halbrand to you so yeah like, maybe like I'm trying to think, like, someone he might say my name is Sauron. Someone else he might say my name is Halbrand. So he's established it. To these people, I'm Halbrand. Yeah. I don't know what I mean by that, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe it means, like, to, like, human scum I don't like, I'm Halbrand. <laughs> well, just that, it, again, this is moments where it's, like, a little too much, like, a wink from the writers of the show. Where it's like, oh, is this Sauron? No, it's Hal. Like it, it just feels really weird to constantly be talking about his name there. Like I get what they could be going for, like like you just pointed out, or even the fact that he's trying to establish a name for himself. You could even argue that aspect about it. But because he's one of like the main at the, at the point at this point in time, he is one of the main uh, suspects of being Sauron. It just feels a little too jokey with like 
a wink to the audience when he doesn't really say anything and again his plan still doesn't make sense i i still don't even know why he gets arrested to be honest you could say it's for stealing but it's not it's for a tavern brawl so <clears throat> like that he that he didn't instigate. right like like four people attack him and he wins that fight and he gets arrested and i it's a missed opportunity for him not to get arrested and then for the crowd that starts to turn on Galadriel and him. They were like, why wasn't he arrested? Right, well, it, it gives really it... his fault. <laughs> well, but see, like, we would know that, and, like, Farazhan would know that, and the Queen would know that, but, like, the townspeople just see this, this elf and this random human running around doing whatever they want with no punishment. What's going on? Like, it, it, would, it would galvanize the public a little bit better than what happens uh, in the show. Uh, yeah, I, I just... There's a few just missed moments that I think would have worked if they do it slightly different, but everything else still stays the same. Uh, okay, so with that, I'm jumping to the library, which All I right. think looks good. Uh, I will say the horseback but, riding to get there, we, we passed over this, but like nothing to say other than waste of time. Like We did not yeah. need that much horse riding. Um, uh, and then we get into the thing where like that sigil quote-unquote sigil is just really obvious yeah <laughs> like anyone who's looked at a how did map not, how did not, no one realize this <laughs> yeah because like how long has galadriel been hunting this like she never looked at a map once like what's going on here um so yeah also missed opportunity to say something along the lines of that is the language of black speech and i will not utter it or something like that yeah. um because that okay i know we we criticize a lot of the overuse of Tolkien or not Tolkien Jackson-esque lines but that's one that works because people do say that like characters in Jackson's work and in here are not going to want to say that the that language or speak that language so I think it works <clears throat> in that sense whereas we have other we have other ties to Jackson lines that just don't flow as well but here I think it would have worked so that's my one little input on hey if you want to lean on the jackson lines which i i do love those jackson lines here's one that you missed because it would have been fun to see that one there um i just have weird hardfoot scene um the chant about nobody goes off trail uh after this unless yeah. you have more in the library uh no no yeah. nothing appropriate anyway yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh i i yeah i the the harfoots um i'm i i don't really like spending time with the harfoots at this point in the show so i'm i'm fine uh, with it just... well, kind of interested in their costumes like what's going on here like what 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 inspired this too like is this uh some sort of celtic uh thought like where where did the where, right i just want the author where the where they i believe they yeah from. so i believe like they're they're idea for the ha the harfoots i think is like gaelic or yeah, okay. um yeah gaelic and so maybe it's part like i don't even know if they dug into it or if they just made it up uh now i will i want to clarify because i'm those really guys in... look that one co those costumes they, they look kind of like orc helmets or something. yeah <laughs> so i will i actually thought when i saw these costumes that they were orcs we, 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 attacking we back to the orcs yeah yeah so i will say like uh, I am interested with in-world mythology building and seeing the culture of the Harfoots. My problem is, from what I've learned about the Harfoots culture already, I, I don't think it makes much sense, and so I get turned off with the Harfoots, whereas I really like seeing more about the Orc culture, because that one at least feels like it makes sense and, and fits together to some degree. The Harfoots one just seem all over the place, and he, this is like a prime example of like, what the heck is going on with these helmets what's going on with this like little performative dance thing and why is it not mentioned again later like it like literally happens and we don't even talk about it like it you know what i mean like it's almost in there just to like show us like oh these harfoots they're weird and we don't explore it any further and i i feel like that's not how 
how it should go. Like it, we should get a little bit, like a a little crumb about what's going on there, where they mention, like this was passed on from something, and like then we can start to like try to connect these dots, and like it, you know what I mean. Like otherwise, it's just it's just fun dances that might be based on real world mythology, and not have anything to do with Harfoots at all. Like it just, I don't know. I I just feel like they just they don't do a good job with the harfoot society like they, they just want them to be weird and crazy and like this like caravan traveling group and and they just don't want to they don't want to go too deep into it because it's a hard culture to write it, it is what it seems like to me yeah uh, whereas the orcs i think they want to explore the orcs and i think they're doing a good job with that exploration and like trying to build upon what we already know about these orcs and almost show us that there's there's more to it and i i like that and and that's why it's so it's so bit like it's such a big contrast between how they do the orcs with the adar and how they do the harfoots to me so that's my problem i just have a comment that so we're elaborating on largo and marigold's relationship and that largo is an optimist and is very proud of nori like she sets her mind to it she can do anything yeah uh <laughs> again this is like they say that and then they're like don't do anything <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so like this is what i mean like i like that moment is fine like that's in every single fantasy sci-fi film whatever like that is just a staple and it's fine like no one's gonna have a problem with cliches all the time like or not all the time but like sometimes and that's fine but then their culture is like don't do it and so like having them say that and then like being part of a group that's like don't do it and then even her parents are kind of like you're putting us in jeopardy don't don't be a weirdo like just fall in line like it just it's just weird i i literally wrote here it's time for death cult festival time with the harfoots also there's a sub <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also if you turn the subtitles on there's a sex joke here so the quote is this be careful the moon is full tonight um, and so when you're having your shenanigans later on, it will be in full view of the camp. Okay. <laughs> what is going on in this group? <laughs> and I will say, I will say, I, I mean, I hate this scene so much that I've already done multiple shorts on this scene and you can check them out on, on our shorts section. Um, I, at least they gave Poppy's family a death that is, is sad and not funny. Cause like imagine if they had written this, but it's they, Poppy's they family that like fell off a cliff chasing butterflies. <laughs> yeah, what a bunch of idiots. <laughs> Sorry, Poppy. We couldn't be bothered helping them. And then they laugh at a guy that gets stung by a bee or something. Like, like, what? Why are they laughing? Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, I also write the stranger is kind of. I don't know. It's a bit. I just think it was kind of like almost too dumb for him to have just set the star chart on fire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a little, it's a little bit um, plot devicey. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's a little bit like, oh, we can't have this giving away the info right now. We're gonna, we're gonna burn this <laughs> so that no one knows. <laughs> and I said it's interesting he wasn't noticed earlier, seeing like how how the Harfoots seem to be kind of vigilant about right so yeah this is kind of part of the problem with their culture right is that they're doing this death cult and it's pretty loud and uh any random passerby could hear this and like stumble upon them do they have scouts out and like looking you know what i mean like it just I wish they did more with it and it can work. You can still have a weird Harfoot death cult. You can still do all this as long as you establish like how they handle certain situations other than we know that they hide. We know that, but how do they know to hide? Like who is there? Is there a signal that someone like whistles like a little, uh, mm, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like someone needs to be cueing them in. And it would be, yeah, they, sh they should have shown that. Yeah. Right, right. And that would start establishing like how they actually work. Because at this point, I don't believe this society at all. It almost feels like this society was part of a society, like a, a city of Harfoots, and they left. And now they're just meandering through the world. 
and like hiding when when they think there's enemies but they don't really know what's going on like it just it doesn't feel like they've done this multiple times year after year for decades the way that they try to present it um also it's not enough people to sustain a society i'm just saying like it's not enough of them <laughs> yeah. it just unless they get together well, uh, actually that's a good point because you realize like i'm jumping back a bit because largo is talking about like when he first saw Marigold, I'm like, what do you mean you, you just saw her then? Don't you, like, all live in the same Right, island? right, <laughs> right. So, like, this is my problem with the Harfoots. This, I'm going to title this entire section Problem with the Harfoots, probably. Uh, but, like, this this can't be... This cannot work as, as a society, and that's why whenever it happens, I'm put off. It's not because of the actors. It's not because of what's happening. It's literally the in the in show lore that they're trying to build or lack of lore that they're trying to reveal it doesn't make sense to me and i i just am not interested in just silly nonsense they think is fun for harfoots to do i would i want them to actually write something that they think works in world and i don't think they've done that for these guys and so i'm going to be hard on the harfoots until we see season two and see if they correct it Maybe they get together in a big group of Harfoots. Like, all these different caravans go off and then they all yeah. come back. But, like, you'd think about it. They lost they lost Poppy's entire family. They, they need those people. <laughs> like, they need them to survive. And they even say, like, I think um, Eleanor says, uh, what are we living for if, if we, uh, if we aren't, if we aren't uh, living for our friends? And I'm like, yeah, the, like, why are you guys traveling together and then not being friendly with each other and, like, helping each other? Like, it doesn't make sense. Why do you guys even like each other if you're mm. going to just leave? If someone's, like, falling down and, like, they might die and you're just going to say, screw you, you, you go to the back. Like, it, it's just insane to me. It's straight the up insane. Back. The back back or the middle back? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That line is funny. I, I think, I think I that line's kind of fun i'm as if I, with everything else going on i'm not gonna give crap on that line that line's fun <laughs> well actually i think i another comment some like malva is much harsher than sadic wanting to decaravan them and, and sadic makes exceptions to the rules so like, he's a little more he, he little even nicer. says he even is like we can't just like decaravan them like we're gonna kill an entire family you monster and it's like you did that to poppy's family they they there was a little bit of an avalanche and you wouldn't go back and help them like what but you don't even know if they died from the rocks they could have just been stuck in the snow for all you know yeah like oh it's just so messed anyway yeah that you're right you're right the hierarchy of this of this group doesn't i don't quite get it either so sadik is in charge and he's got two women like constantly trying to tell him to do like bad shit like <laughs> <laughs> like who are they are they like are they like second and third in command or like they his are they his, are they his wives are they i don't know i definitely interpret malva to be like next in line yeah <laughs> which will be bad yeah because <laughs> she's because she's evil now if they get some <laughs> games of thrones shit going on we're like I know, I know that we, we know that this isn't going to happen because we know what happens, but like she's like plotting to like <laughs> like leave him somewhere. Oh, he got left behind. It'd be so easy to bump people off in this society. You just take them into the woods, kill them, and say they got left behind. Like it's so crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah. So okay, I'm jumping back. I'm jumping to this elf uprising. Uh, so what do you think about what's going on here? Uh, elf upright. Oh, is this the? Um... It's a yeah. Thing. So oh, so we we are we we're skipping past. Uh, just real quick, we're skipping past. Uh, Isildur, um, and his dad uh, and Elendil talking about how how much of a screw up Isildur is. Uh, I think I didn't have anything to say. Uh... Yeah. I, I so I have this also for episode four, but I'll say it now just to to give it another boost. Isildur sucks. He's one of the worst characters. I mean, look, not nothing against the actor and not even against the writing. Like they wrote a bad, like they wrote him to be a sucky, terrible character that you hate. I hate Isildur. Uh, 
Elendil is awesome. Hermione is okay, um, but uh, she's a bit of a shit disturber. But Isildur is straight up an awful person. Like, he's so selfish. He's so self-involved and weird. And, and also, he's, like, kind of getting possessed by something, but it's not yeah. clear what. And he hasn't even touched anything. <laughs> he's just out in the water, and he's getting possessed by, like, I guess it's Halbrand. He's close to Halbrand, and Halbrand's, like, already possessing him. I actually have a note here. It's amazing that this guy, this is spoilers, by the way. It's amazing that this guy is going to kill Sauron at some point. <laughs> I cannot, I, I have no way. Uh, people are mad about Galadriel not being in tune with the character from Peter Jackson's uh, trilogy. Is Sildor, no way does this guy take up his father's sword and cut off Sauron's hand. There's no way. I, I don't believe it. This, this punk kid, no. He's not, this is a fake Isildur. <laughs> yeah. He's absolutely awful. Anyway, yeah, so we can we can skip that uh, that bit there. Um, but I do like, I do want to say Elendil again, the actor, is great here. His voice has a moment where it sounds just like Boromir. I love that aspect. I think he's doing a great job. And his character is likable. Uh, so I like, I like that aspect because there's not a ton of Numenorians that are likable. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's like the one rational guy in the entire show. Yeah, like they're, they're <laughs> almost set up to fail from an audience perspective because we have a deranged queen. We have Farazhan kind of being a little finger esque like plotter in the background. That's We've got, true, yeah. uh, I don't know her name, but I call her Hermione. Um, she's kind of. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> I don't know her name. I don't remember her name either, <laughs> but you're talking about the sister, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she sounds like Hermione, looks like Hermione. There's a scene where she's like, um, you know, I, I the, the guy is like hitting on her and she's just kind of being like a, like a, not a flirt, but like she's still, she's like rejecting him, but like in this like, I'm a strong, independent woman. Like, I don't go off with strange men and something like that. And it's just like, okay, this is a weird character. Like, I, why even have her in this show? I don't, I don't even know what she's doing yet. Like, she, she does one thing later on in the show and it's not even clear why it's her that's needed it could have been anyone so anyway um and then we miss about we miss some flirting with Halbrand and Galadriel in jail but yeah let's cut to uh let's cut to some action here um so yeah you want to cut to the elf uprising yeah I I I mean okay I was just gonna say just I like it overall but it's a good scene but do you think Arondir is a Gary Sue? Like, he, he, he hmm. presumably his background is similar to everyone else here, similar training, similar upbringing, yet he is way more competent than all the other elves. <laughs> like, he's he's right. the one jumping up there. He, he can take on the war one-on-one. -on -one. He can jump up and smash down that tenth thing, but no one else can. He, he, he seems to be much better fighter than the other elves right yeah so i i at first when you said it i was like oh no way did i miss something and then i i, I just thought about it more as you were talking and i was like you know what you're right because one of the elves gets absolutely decimated by the warg and they had a weapon yeah. like they have a spear unless they're robert baratheon who doesn't know how to work his spear apparently they get absolutely decimated by a warg because they hold their spear up as if they're blocking a downward cut. <laughs> but it's a warg. Just stab. Point it. Point the. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. know what they're doing. So you're right. Now, um, yeah, it, you know. This is the only one who can who can do anything, really. The other one, the other, everyone else is useless. They're elves. Presumably, the and warrior elves too. Presumably, they're so. They should be good. This is another one of those moments, I guess, where like I I can come up with something that works for me, which is he was the le the last captured, which means he's the least starved. Okay. So maybe. he still has some strength, whereas everyone else has been here for a li little bit longer, a couple days maybe, with very little water, maybe no food. So maybe that gives him a bit of an edge there. Uh, cause he, you're right. He pulls a very Legolas-y type move and Legolas is, is straight up stacked. Like he's overpowered, which is great. I love the original trilogy. So I'm not 
complaining, but it works there. Here, you're right. It but, comes but off. But you can almost justify Legolas because he's like a noble elf. True. Like, he he's he, he has the best of the best training. Right. Arondir, true. Arondir is a grunt technically, yeah. it, but he's still better than everyone else who should have the same training. You're right. Yeah. So you know, it could be you could be onto something in that we just overlook it because this is one of the really one of the best scenes in this episode and so we we almost don't want to see that aspect we, we would rather just watch the the cool fight scene but you could be onto something here they do have a rondier who as you've said is is a nobody guy within the structure of the elves he is turning out to be like not only good at fighting but like a leader and all this kind of stuff and it it that only works <clears throat> if there's some place for that to grow into the way that like Aragorn has to become the ruler he was born to be type of thing. There's no like vacuum for Arondir to fill in the power structure of the elven society. So like him like leading these people, like it, it, it doesn't actually do anything for his character down the road. Like he's not growing into anything because he's going to be a nobody once he's done here anyway. <clears throat> like he's just going to run off with, um, with his wife uh and that'll be the end of it essentially so yeah no you could be onto something um yeah uh, we'll have to keep an eye out for that later on because we he, he does seem to be gung-ho about jumping back into battles all the time um you know hope like hopefully he does take some damage or at least is, it has some struggles that's where we'll, we'll we'll see the test of it if he ever actually struggles um uh, against an enemy because yeah right now you're right with this scene and what what happens next uh he is he's looking like he's got a lot of plot armor on <laughs> that's for sure yeah everyone else like they just get slaughtered even the, the 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 leader he can't dodge an arrow from orcs in like straight up sunlight <laughs> right right so th i i actually have this down uh, I I didn't I didn't cat I didn't write his name down so I forget his name but I just have like hey leader elf what do your elf eyes see and then he just gets punctured by an arrow so he didn't see anything <laughs> like like I, they're supposed to like just be like so much their, their senses are so much better and heightened and yet they kind of don't they kind of act like humans with pointy ears in this scene um yeah you're right this scene has problems that's sad now now i'm sad this this episode disappointment <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah all right i think that's i think that's the end there right we, we uh yeah, that's i don't have anything else written yeah yeah like it's like oh we're almost gonna survive get shot and then the orcs the orcs come at us and we're we're trapped again yeah all right, well, that's it for episode three. Let us know what you thought about this episode down in the comments below. Has has anyone out there revisited this show uh, the way we're doing uh, just to see how it stands the test of time, even though it's only been like a year? So let us know down below. 